Okay, in the last lecture, uh, we have discussed about some of the DC characteristics of uh, practical up amp, which are going to affect the performance of the operational amplifier. So, uh, today we will discuss about some AC characteristics of practical amplifier, which uh, affects the performance of operational amplifier. So, there are basically uh, two AC characteristics uh, which are going to affect the operational amplifier performance. One is called frequency response and that is called flow rate. First, I will discuss about the frequency response, how this frequency response is going to affect the performance of the operational amplifier. If we take an ideal uh, operational amplifier, bandwidth is infinity for ideal up amp. And open loop gain is say AOL, which is of the order of uh, 90 dB in case of uh, operational amplifier 741 IC. So, the meaning of this bandwidth infinite is. So, if we plot this 90 dB, in fact, this is 20 logarithm of AOL. So, normally this magnitude will be plotted on the logarithmic scale. This is dB. dB means uh, decibel. So, which is normally used to represent a wide range of uh, values. Okay? Here, if this gain varies over a wide range, so we can represent this by using dB. So, if this is 90 dB, in case of ideal operational amplifier, for all the frequencies, the gain should be AOL, as the frequencies varies from DC 0 to infinite frequency. So, it has to provide the constant gain of 20 logarithm of AOL, which is of the order of 90 dB in case of 741 operational amplifier. But for practical uh, operational amplifier, after a certain frequency, the gain is going to roll off. So, if I take the practical up amp, so this is for practical up amp. After a certain frequency, say F1, so the gain will roll off at a rate of minus 20 dB per decade. Decade means a tenfold uh, increase in the frequency. That is, if I take two points, this is say some 10 kilohertz and this is 100 kilohertz, then this is one decade. And if you take the dB here and here, this value is say A, then this will be A minus 20 dB. So, for every one decade, the gain will decrease by 20 dB. Okay. What is the reason for this roll off? So, the reason for this uh, roll off is there will be a presence of capacitance in the equivalent circuit. Okay. This uh, capacitance will be caused by the physical characteristics of the device such as BJT or FIT. So, if we take the equivalent circuit of op amp at high frequencies, there will be capacitance.
you see the equivalent circuit this should be grounded in normal cases, but in case of practical op amp there will be capacitance at the output. This is the difference voltage Vd, this is input resistance Ri, this is output resistance Ro, this will be open circuit, AOL is the open loop voltage gain into Vd. So, in case of practical op amp, there will be some capacitance component which is going to degrade the performance of operational amplifier at high frequencies which causes the gain to roll off by 20 dB per decade. So, this capacitance is due to physical characteristics of the device, physical characteristics of device such as BJT or FET. So, this operational amplifier will be constructed by using either BJT or FET. Now, what will be this frequency response? In order to study the frequency response of this practical op amp, which contains the capacitance at the output, so we will derive the expression for the voltage gain with uh, capacitance. So, we will define this voltage gain as A dash, including this A, is equal to AOL into VD is this voltage there will be voltage divider between this resistance and this capacitance. Okay. So, we have discussed how to perform the analysis of the capacitance in the S domain, this capacitance uh, will be represented by 1 by SC. So, if this voltage is AOL VD, then the voltage across this capacitor which is V naught, so this is V naught is equal to AOL into VD into 1 by SC divided by R0 plus 1 by SC. This is equal to AOL VD. SC SC will get cancelled, we will get 1 over 1 plus S R0C. But S is J omega or J 2 pi f. Therefore, what is V naught AOL times V D into 1 over 1 plus J 2 pi F R 0 C. Let F 1 is equal to 1 over 2 pi R 0 C. Then what happens to this V 0 AOL V D into 1 by 1 plus j f by f 1. So, therefore, what is voltage gain? This V naught by V d is the voltage gain. So, the voltage gain A v is equal to V naught by V d, this is equal to A o l divided by 1 plus j times f by F1. So, this is the voltage gain of operational amplifier including the capacitance. Okay. So, without this capacitance simply AOL is the voltage gain, but with capacitance there will be a factor in the denominator. Okay. Now, we will see the frequency response of this operational amplifier with capacitance. So, this voltage gain you have got as V naught by V d is equal to A o l divided by 1 plus J f by f 1. So, we can have two uh, responses, one is magnitude response, another is phase response. Okay. If you want magnitude response of A v, this is equal to A o l divided by magnitude of this one becomes square root of A square plus B square. A plus J B magnitude will be 
which is a complex quantity square root of a square plus b square. This is equal to 1 plus f by f1 whole square. So, if you want to plot this modulus of a b with, res with respect to the frequency f, we will take 20 logarithm of this a v as I have told uh, to represent a wide range of values, we will use logarithm is scale rather than the normal scale. So, this implies 20 logarithm of modulus of a v is equal to 20 logarithm of a o l this is to the base 10 minus 20 logarithm of 1 plus f by f 1 square whole to the power of half this is square root this is log a by b is equal to log a minus log b. So, this half we can take to the in front of this one. So, this will be 20 logarithm of a o l minus this half will come here, so this becomes 10, 10 logarithm of 1 plus f by f 1 square. Now, we will see what are the characteristics of this 20 logarithm of modulus of a v. at f is equal to 0. Here, if you substitute f is equal to 0, this becomes 1 plus 0. So, log 1 which is log 1 is 0. So, simply 20 logarithm of modulus of 20 logarithm of modulus of a v is equal to 20 logarithm of a o l. So, here 20 logarithm of a o l. Second one at f is equal to f 1. So, this becomes 1. So, 1 plus 1 2 log 2 log 2 is 0.3010 this becomes log 2 at f is equal to f 1. So, whose value is 0 0.3010 approximately 0 0.3 say. So, 0.3 into 10 becomes, so this is minus 3. So, this is 20 logarithm of a o l minus 3. This will be the value at f is equal to f 1. Means, whatever the value at f is equal to 0, at f is equal to f 1, there will be a 3 dB decrease. So, this will be having high frequencies. So, it f is equal to f 1, there will be some 3 dB decrement in the gain. So, this is 20 logarithm of a o l minus 3 dB and after that this 20 logarithm of modulus of a v is equal to 20 logarithm of a o l minus 3 dB. third one for larger value of f there will be a roll off of frequency response rolls off at a rate of 20 dB per decade. So, here at the high frequencies above this f 1, there will be a minus 20 dB per decade decrease in the gain. So, you see about the magnitude or the amplitude characteristics. Okay. So, what about the phase characteristics? So, this is a v magnitude is this, what about the phase angle if I call phi as angle of a v? This is nothing but numerator angle is 0 and denominator angle is minus of tan inverse of this f by f 1. 
this is expression for the phase this is the expression for the magnitude so here are the three characteristics of the amplitude response now what are the characteristics of the phase response Phase phi is given by angle of A V is given by minus tan inverse F by F one. At F is equal to zero, tan inverse zero, this becomes angle phi becomes zero. This is minus ninety degrees. If I take this as zero, so here at f is equal to zero, this is zero. At f is equal to f one, phi is equal to tan inverse one, which is equal to forty five degrees. And at f is equal to infinity. phi is equal to tan inverse infinity which is equal to 90 degrees this is tan inverse zero so this will be something like this at infinite this will goes to the minus 90 degrees whereas at f is equal to f1 this is minus 45 degrees so that means the final conclusion is if the operational amplifier consists of a single capacitance then this will give the maximum phase shift of 90 degrees and this particular frequency f1 is called corner frequency so the op amp with single corner frequency produces a maximum phase shift of 90 degrees but practically what happens is there will be a lot of uh, number of stages okay number of stages will be present in the op amp so in that case what will be the transfer function okay or what will be the gain evol divided by 1 plus j times f by f1 in case of single corner frequency if i assume that there are three corner frequencies then this will be 1 plus j times f by f1 One plus j times f by f two. One plus j times f by f three. Assuming three corner frequencies. And here also assume that the zero is less than f one is less than f two is less than f three. This F one, F two, F three are three corner frequencies. Then what will be the frequency response? In case of single uh, corner frequency up to F one, the gain is almost constant, and after F one, there will be a roll off of minus twenty dB per decade. So in case of three corner frequencies, the response will be on the logarithmic scale. Up to F one, this will be constant almost. Then, from F one to F two, there will be a roll off of 
minus 20 dB per decade and after that minus 40 dB per decade, after that minus 60 dB per decade. If I take this axis here, this is frequency amplitude. This is 20 logarithm of AL up to F1. From F1 to F2, this is minus 20 dB per decade. From F2 to F3, this is minus 40 dB per decade. From F3 to the ending frequency, this is minus 60 dB per decade. If it goes on increasing the corner frequencies, then the roll off rate also will be increases. Okay. So, this is 20 dB per decade for every corner frequency. Now, one of the important parameter here is called as uh, stability, operational amplified stability. Operational amplifier will be operated uh, very rarely in uh, open loop configuration. The reason is because of the large gain, there is a possibility that uh, the operational amplifier will saturate. So, normally we will uh, operate this operational amplifier uh, in closed loop configuration with some feedback. Okay. So, let us assume that there is an inverting amplifier with negative feedback. This is RF, this is R1, this is VI, this is output V0 this is equal to minus R f by R 1 times V i. So, this particular network is called as feedback network, this R f R 1 is called feedback network and this configuration is called closed loop configuration. So, there is a well known fact that uh, you might have studied in your uh, feedback amplifiers. So, the feedback network will reduce the gain of the amplifier. So, if I assume that A is the open loop gain, then the closure loop gain is equal to A by 1 plus A beta, where A is open loop gain, this is closure loop gain. A is open loop gain. and beta is feedback factor. Here this R f and R 1 is going to decide the feedback. Now, the stability of this operational amplifier depends upon the uh, roots of this characteristic equation. Okay. So, if 1 plus A beta is say for example, 0. What happens to this closure loop gain? ACL becomes infinity. So, this will cause us the instability of the circuit. So, in fact, that we are going to discuss in the coming lectures, 
this causes the oscillations of the circuit ok. So, implies what is A beta, A beta is equal to minus 1. So, we have the magnitude as unity because A beta can be complex quantities also. Here of course, we have taken the resistive network, but uh, in general you can have uh, reactive uh, networks also. So, A beta can be a, a complex quantity, so implies the magnitude of A beta should be equal to 1 and phase angle of A beta should be either pi or 3 pi or 5 pi and so on. For this condition, there will be instability of the operational amplifier. Operational amplifier can behave as a oscillator. Okay. Now, under what circumstances uh, these two conditions will be satisfied? Magnitude of A beta is unity and phase angle of A beta is pi r odd multiples of pi. So, for that if A beta 1 plus A beta is less than 1, so the denominator of this one is less than 1 means overall this one will be greater than A C L will be greater than A. So, for this A C L is greater than A. So, implies A beta is less than 0, this 1 1 get cancelled less than 0. So, if A beta is less than 0, there is a possibility that A C L can be greater than A. So, this may cause the oscillations or instability of the circuit. Okay. So, if I take this resistive network, beta will not create any phase shift, 0 phase shift caused by the beta if resistive network, if resistive feedback. If the feedback circuit consists of uh, capacitors and inductors, then there will be uh, some phase shift caused by beta because of the resistive this is 0. Now, if this A produces phase shift of 180 degrees or more than that one, then there is a possibility that the uh, operation amplifier can be driven into oscillations. Okay. So, for that we can easily explain here this through this diagram. Okay. So, how many corner frequencies are required to make this system unstable? Okay. So, let us assume that this open loop uh, gain is 90 dB. So, I want to uh, obtain a closed loop uh, gain of 80 dB say. Then what will be corresponding uh, frequency? Let us assume that this frequency is this one. So, this 80 dB will fall on to the minus 20 dB per decade line. Okay. So, there will be some bandwidth, this is the band of the frequencies that will be allowed for this 80 dB closed loop gain. Okay. So, here because this point is within this minus 20 dB per decade uh, portion, so the maximum phase shift that will be caused is minus 90 degrees, this we have seen in the last uh, slide. Okay. So, for single corner frequency the maximum uh, phase shift that will be caused is minus 90 degrees. So, as long as this 80 dB falls within this minus 20 dB per decade uh, portion, the maximum phase shift is uh, minus 90 degrees and this will not cause the system into oscillation, it will not uh, affect the stability of the system, S still the system is stable. So, up to this point system is stable. Suppose if I want a closed loop uh, gain of say 60 dB which falls say uh, in this region, 60 dB. So, this falls in this region, here this is second uh, corner frequency, this is one corner frequency will give maximum of minus 90 degrees phase shift, the second also may give 
maximum of minus 90 degrees total phase shift becomes minus 90 minus 90 this is minus 180 is the maximum. So, there is a possibility that during this portion up to here there is a possibility that the system may uh, becomes uh, unstable okay. and if I take this closure loop gain of the order of 20 dB if it falls in this region between uh, this F 3 to the last frequency where the roll off rate is minus 60 dB per se decade then definitely this system will becomes unstable because this total phase shift from here to here is totally maximum of 180 degrees. Okay. So, this criteria will be satisfied thereby system becomes unstable. So, that is why you have to make sure that uh, you have to choose this resistive network and also the closure loop gain such that it will operate in the minus 20 dB per decade region so that the system becomes stable otherwise there is a possibility of unstability. So, in case of this uh, unstable system how to compensate this uh, the frequency response okay, because this is going to decrease at a rate of minus 20 dB per decade thereby it may affect the stability of the system. Okay. To avoid this uh, we can provide some sort of the compensation, frequency compensation. So, this frequency compensation is of two types, one is external another is internal. So, we will discuss compensation in the next lecture. Thank you.